Hello folks, this is Jim with Science Talk. I have a story here involving the Arctic and permafrost. Now, you've heard me discuss with you before about the uh, methane issue. And if you were to ask climate scientists who work in the Arctic, what's the one thing that keeps them up at night? It's the methane question. Namely, how much is stored in the ground and how rapidly will it be released? It is being released. We've seen documentations of that. Uh, Norwegian researchers, for example, have documented uh, bubbles uh, emanating out of the uh, substrate in the oceanic regions, bubbles that they've uh, sampled, collected, and indeed verified with methane. Um, as the Arctic warms and the ground and the permafrost thaws, methane is released because now bacteria and other microbes can start uh, decomposing the organic material. And since it's typically an anaerobic uh, situation, methane is released. Now, CO2 is, there's more of it being released than methane, mainly because of burning a fossil fuel. But methane is a more potent greenhouse gas, meaning that it will trap the heat uh, more per given. If I have the same amount of methane, same amount of CO2, methane will trap more heat. So it will warm things up faster, except that methane is not as long lasting as, say, carbon is. So what's going on here? Okay, Arctic lakes, and I'll explain what we're looking at here uh, once I get through uh, uh, sharing with you the, some of the research. Uh, Arctic lakes could release this vast reservoir of, as I just mentioned, carbon, ancient carbon, whatever you want to call it, that's buried deep in the ground. It's buried under what we call permafrost, which is permanently frozen ground. And if this does happen, it could accelerate climate change. Now, in past videos, I had discussed with you a positive feedback loop that can happen. And uh, this would fall in the category. You warm up the air, the permafrost thaws, more bacterial action on the organic matter, more methane's release, methane trapping heat, further warming the air, further thawing the permafrost, etc., etc. So the we're going to be looking at, what I'm going to be discussing with you is something called thermokarst lakes. And these, are, and I will have a more detailed description uh, for you towards the end of this video. Uh, these lakes, which form uh, when basically surface ice melts and the ground beneath it uh, collapses. And then, as it does so, it could thaw the underground permafrost leading to methane being released. Now, in the past, most climate scientists would say, well, we really don't have to worry about this until 2100 because they were thinking that it would just take a long time for the, any thawing to reach those depths by which the material is located. Well, Researcher uh, Dr. Katie Walter Anthony, she's an ecologist and biogeochemist at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, my old stomping grounds, and uh, she did uh, some excellent uh, work on this, work that has been published in the journal uh, Nature Communications. So let's kind of give a little more background. We know that climate change uh, is taking hold in the Arctic and is taking hold at a much faster rate than anywhere else on the planet. And one of the biggest risks associated with this warming is the thawing of the permafrost. So the deep layers of permanently frozen soil that underlie much of the Arctic hold massive reservoirs of organic carbon in the form of thousands of years worth of trapped plant matter 
and perhaps sometimes animal carcasses. As the soil gradually thaws, these buried organisms, flora and fauna alike, will decay and release CO2 and methane. Excuse me, into the atmosphere, which can in turn lead to increased warming. It's that positive feedback loop I have described for you multiple occasions. The conclusion that permafrost carbon modelers were reaching was that until you thought really deep, this access to this material and thus being released was not going to happen for a long time. And what Dr. Anthony's research is basically showing is that this can happen much faster and much sooner on a scale of decades, not a century or so. So basically, she says, what our study shows is that in a lake, you thaw that deep really fast on a scale of decades, lakes will tap into that old carbon much sooner, and they will release that permafrost carbon much sooner than that thaws on land. Because remember, we look we consider the specific heat of water as well. It takes a lot more to freeze water. Of course, it takes a lot more to melt it, but still, there's a lot of heat stored in there. So uh, Dr. Anthony and her colleagues have been studying the uh, what's called the thermal car slakes, which are created when the ice rich ground thaws, causing the earth underneath to collapse and form a pit. The lakes can be up to 100 feet deep, about 30 meters. And if the water, this is the key point, if the water does not freeze all the way to the bottom in the winter, the heat in the liquid water causes the permafrost beneath that lake to thaw, said Dr. Anthony. So specific heat of water holds a lot of heat. If the water, if the water does not freeze all the way down at the bottom, there's some liquid at the bottom. They, there's sufficient heat in the water because it's above freezing. It can start thawing out the permafrost that lies underneath it. And eventually you can start getting seepage further and further down. As that permafrost thaws, we get what we call a thaw bulb. And that thaw bulb can deepen and expand laterally. Dr. Anthony goes on to explain. When that happens, what was previously frozen soil with organic carbon in it becomes thawed, and that thawed soil releases the organic matter to microbes that decompose it and make carbon dioxide and methane. So part of her uh, research was not just, uh, in addition to just understanding the mechanism, wanted to actually start quantifying just how much methane is there. And this is the major component of the gas that forms in these lakes. So it is not a trivial uh, exercise. Okay, so let me give you a little more detail about thermocar slakes, and then I've got a couple things here to show you. Thermocar slakes and drained lake basins are widespread in the Arctic and subarctic permafrost lowlands that have ice rich sediments. Thermocarst lake formation is a dominant mode of permafrost degradation and is linked to surface disturbance, subsequent melting of ground ice, surface subsistence, another fancy way of saying sinking, water impoundment, and positive feedbacks between lake growth and permafrost thaw. Whereas lake drainage uh, generally results in local permafrost aggradation. Thermocarst lakes characteristically have unique limnological. Limnology is a study of freshwater systems. You have bloatic and uh, lentic, basically lakes and rivers and streams. So limnology is that branch of aquatic ecology that deals with freshwater systems. So thermocarst lakes characteristically have unique limnological morphological and biogeochemical characteristics 
that are closely tied to cold climate conditions and permafrost properties. Thermocarst lakes also have a tendency toward complete or partial drainage through permafrost degradation and erosion. Thermocarst lake dynamics strongly affect the development of landscape, geomorphology, hydrology, and the habitat characteristic of permafrost lowlands. So here's a photo. It's a USGS, U.S. Geological Survey photo. This is flying over the Arctic in Alaska. And uh, if I can move the cursor, here are some of these pits that form. Right? Pits, pits. All these are pits, right? And here we can see they're filled with ice and water. These look like ice. You see how it's a little bluer? That's probably liquid water. But this is typical. This is typical of the landscape. You have these little pits that form and they fill up with the with H2O and become either frozen or liquid state. The H2O can then, if, if it's not frozen all the way to the bottom that I just described, it can start buying the permafrost underneath. So this uh, is a diagram that illustrates what I've been talking about here. Now, all these little circles here, that's supposed to represent methane bubbling out. So we have peat here. Peat would be like your organic material. Uh, so this, here's the permafrost. This, I guess brown or ochre is the color, whatever. Okay, and they superimpose the typical uh, Arctic landscape above it. This is an actual photo. This is all diagram from here. But basically, here's an ice. And here's the snowline landscape. You might have an ice wedge, a large one. And if you look on this here, you see these little dark patches. This is where some of the bubbling is actually reaching to the surface and is warm enough to melt holes in the ice. So we have microbial action on the peat, basically the organic material, creates C, uh, methane, CH4. Methane started bubbling, right? bubbling out of the, the lay, organic layer and so on. This is this, what's, uh, I guess it's called flesh color here, but this reading here, this is that thaw bulb I was just describing, and that thaw bulb can help uh, thaw out the permafrost, reaching deeper and deeper, and thereby allowing more and more organic material to be acted upon by the microbes, further releasing uh, CH4. Now, Smith Lake, which is right on the campus of the uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks, they've done this. They've drilled holes in the ice in the middle of winter, and you can actually see bubbles uh, coming up uh, to the surface. And I think there's a YouTube video out there where they ignite those bubbles, and it's, it's methane. So, so now you start taking this, you start multiplying by the hundreds and thousands of lakes, that are located, and you can see that this is not a trivial matter to try and estimate how much potential methane there is that can be released to the atmosphere. This is not uh, trivial at all. It's uh, similar to what we see in the ocean floors, where we see the thawing out of the methane hydrates and uh, clathrates within the sediments <clears throat> that also now uh, release uh, methane. So you have basically oceanographic source, for methane, fresh water source for methane. So um, this is another uh, part of the uh, puzzle, another part of the uh, equation that goes into understanding better what's happening with the climate and uh, some of the mechanisms involved that are uh, changing things. So. Um, Hope you found this uh, interesting, and uh, thanks for watching. 
Hey folks, just a reminder to please subscribe and click the bell so you know when I drop a video. Please share my videos, please tell others of my channel and of the work that I do. I also hope that you will consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash science talk with Jim Massa, where from time to time I upload videos there exclusively for my patron subscribers. Details in the description box below.